Hello everybody, I'm Bill Owen from MMPC Tech. How you doing? It's good to see you again. Thank you for watching the MZ1 build series. This is now part four, and this is the stage where we show you how we created the hardline acrylic loop inside the PC. And I've got Jesse and Mosquito from the Mazu staff to share an overview because they're the ones that came to the shop and put this in. Jesse, he's a long-term veteran now using this stuff, but this was Mosquito's first time, so it was interesting to hear his thoughts on using it. And uh, and I think uh, this stuff's going to get pretty popular over the next several months and years because it has a lot of benefits. It's fairly cheap to buy, and the compression fittings uh, are easy to use. And well, see for yourself. Now we chose clear acrylic tubing because we wanted to see the UV green glowing dye with the distilled water. And you can get color tubing from Primo Chill or any of the online PC hardware liquid cooling retailers. But since we've chosen clear, you can get clear tubing from MakeMaster.com at a really good price, $369 per 6 foot length plus shipping. And there's the stock number on the screen if you want to pause it and write that down. That's the best price I've found. This size acrylic tubing works great with the Primo Chill Ghost Revolver compression fittings. After cutting down your acrylic tubing to the desired length that you need, just place the threaded collar over the acrylic tube and then place the o-ring over the tube and then insert the tube into the tapered core of the fitting and then just fasten on the threaded collar until firm. Here's an overview of the tools and supplies that we used for bending the acrylic tubing. Measuring tape for measuring those curves or bends that you need for your system loop. 3 8 OD silicon o-ring cord, another McMaster find. You can also find from many of the online PC retailers. We found that the most effective and cheapest solution for lubricating the silicone fill tube is just a bucket with some water and some dish soap in it. Now safety first of course, work gloves whenever you're using the heat gun, but I will say that these guys didn't wear the gloves. They didn't feel they needed to. Heat gun, you want one with a stand on it so you can do hands free when you're heating up the tubing. You can find these professional heat guns with stands on Amazon.com or brand new on eBay for around 50 to 60 bucks. They're also great for heat shrinking when you're doing custom sleeving jobs. Next is a small hacksaw or jeweler's saw and if you can pick up a miter box so you can use that to hold the acrylic tubing when you cut it. After cutting the acrylic tubing to clean the ends we use a tube deburring reamer tool. It has blades on either end for both the ID and the OD of the acrylic tubing. An alternative to the pipe deburring tool is using medium grit sandpaper to clean the end and the edges of the acrylic tubing after you've cut it. Another optional tool for bending acrylic tubing is a pipe bending jig and there's lots of guides online for making these on your own. They're very simple to make. These guys actually ended up using it just once and doing all the bending freehand. And the guys I'm referring to is Jesse and Mosquito who came to the shop to do all the bending of the acrylic tubing for the build. And this was actually Mosquito's first time ever doing this and he didn't wear the gloves and he did everything freehand. I like what you're doing there. I like how, you, how you're using that uh, tubing. Well yeah, I mean it works out well because it's almost the same dimension and gives you a better perspective of the bend yeah. and length. Helps you visualize. Yes. Now one thing that I would mention here is when you're trying to get a clean bend, make sure you heat up more area than you actually need to bend because you don't want to have the acrylic get shock, you know, temperature shocks or anything like that. So make sure everything is consistent. And this is the only time we actually use the bending jig to bend tubing that night. And as much fun, I mean, it's nice to have that. It's totally optional as, you know, as we went on little more complex bends, 
it was like, I don't think we could even use. Yeah, we spent five minutes trying to figure out how we were going to make the jig work. <laughs> and then we're just like, you know what, let's just do it. Let's just do it by hand and, and not yeah. even worry about it. So yeah, it comes down to just getting the acrylic nice and warm and this going slow. And what I do is I do a gentle stretch when I bend. That way you don't get any buckling or anything like that. So it gives it a clean look. And then you you just kind of leave it a little bit longer because it's a lot easier to, to get a good bend and then make the size yes. fit. Yes. Than it is to try and get yep. the size and then find where the bend Correct. needs to be. Correct. And this was the very first time Mosquito had even done this. Very first time. Yeah. And I'm also I'm I'm using the the tubing on the inside to hold on to it because I'm bending pretty close to the edge there. And I just sort of yeah. bend it and held it. I never even tried the jig. And hands of steel because you have no gloves on. Yeah, one thing I would like to mention is the surface is hot. Do not lick yeah. the acrylic. <laughs> lick it, huh? That'll cool it down, won't it? Isn't do that as what we people say, do? <laughs> don't abide by what we do in the yeah, video. So, yeah. If you are sensitive to touching hot surfaces, please use gloves. Yeah. And then, I don't know if it'll come across very easily in this this shot here, but it didn't quite line up perfectly, so I just went back, put the tubing back inside of it, and then just yeah. sort of heated it up on the corner one more time and then just pulled it towards myself to bring the two pieces together more. Yeah. Other thing I would mention is, I've noticed is, let's say if you bend something and you need to, for some whatever reason, unbend it, take your bended acrylic or the heat gun and gently start applying pressure as it heats evenly and you can make the acrylic, you know, change the bend or make it straight again without leaving any physical marks or any changes. Bent piece perfect length perfect fitting so and we measured extra you know we left some decent margins and then it was just the matter of sanding and cutting it down to make sure it fits okay like i say in my woodworking measure twice cut once and then sneak up on it anyway <laughs> <laughs> so it took about between the two of you about two and a half to three hours yeah, well, that was not seriously working, but... <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of on and off. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think we used the measuring tape even once. No. no. For length of that, no. Yeah. I mean, we, we used it for rough length. Yes. I think we measured, and we're like, well, you know, cut it. We, this is what we need. So then we just kind of added yeah. a couple inches and then cut that. Yep. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could just well, cut it you... all from the same stock right. piece. Just right, right sounds a little more work yeah handling all that would you say that uh hard line acrylic tubing is the next wave in this industry for now i would say yeah and and one thing that i really do like about it is that unlike non-acrylic tubing it, it stays where you put it like yes. you know you don't have to worry about well is this gonna flop down or it it's gonna be there yep no matter what yep. which is that's kind of what i like about it yeah well the thing i like about uh, the Primo Chill fittings is the fact that they're reusable and compared to the Bits Power and the other ones where you have where there's just two O-rings holding it in oh. you know sometimes you you have to be really careful the ends are perfectly deburred whereas with Primo Chill you don't actually have to deburr it as long as you cut as straight and flush you can use it yeah and I like the the inside of the the fitting that you screw into the yep. G quarter thread on your block or your res or whatever is slightly cone shaped on the inside. Yeah. So that, that made that really easy. Yes. Yes. In the next episode of the MZ1 PC build, we're going to put our distilled water and UV dye in this thing and power up the loop for the first time and then bring it down to Brian DeGarity's studio for the final photos. Now, if you don't subscribe to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss that video and the other project videos that we're going to have after this series is done. And if you're looking to get into modding for the first time or you're a longtime veteran, check out the modzoo.com. We've got community forums and a podcast that we do about PC modding and building.